I'm just going to wait a little a couple more minutes for everybody else to wander in. Cool. Oh, there's Ellie. Perfect. Great. So we're almost ready to get going, Ian. Yeah, just a couple more seconds. We'll let everybody, everyone else get in here, but then uh, after, once it hits two, the floor is yours. Okay. Great. Well, listen, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, we have some clients and we have some new folks on the uh, line, so I wanted to give you a warm welcome. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, and uh, we have an hour for our session today. Um, our plan of attack is um, to spend a little bit of time on the, the, the focus is to share our take on some of the trends mandates, ideas, and sort of navigate the changes um, to the real property practice. We're going to spend a little bit of time on the who and the why and the how. Um, and we've also got a great short 15-minute uh, technology tour, That's and we're also going to talk about some examples. And you're also going to get to hear from a colleague of yours, Paul Trudeau from CATSA. Hi, Anna. No, thanks for having me. You're welcome. He's kindly agreed to share firsthand a bit of his story and how they're supporting hybrid work. Um, and we also have lots to share. So we are going to have everyone muted, but you can see there's a little chat box in the lower right uh, that you can type your questions in, which we will get to at the end because we've left some time at the end to get to those. So my colleague, uh, Ian Newman, will be here to help field those. And he'll also be sending you the link to the recording if you'd like to share it afterwards. Ian? Yep. yep. So I'll be sitting. I'll be sitting in the background, monitoring the chat. If you have any questions, make sure to send them in there. I'll we'll read them out at the end, like she said. We also have a poll at the end as well for you guys to answer, as to uh, see kind of, to gauge where where you, all, all your organizations and where your workplace actually itself sits in the scope in the scope of what we've talked talk about today. Great. So relax and enjoy um, and know that this, I know that it's likely just the start of some of your conversations um, and, and maybe just a, a bit of an affirmation for some of the folks that are here. Um, if I go too fast or if you want to talk, I definitely invite you to reach out to me, um, to us here at Horizon or definitely any of your colleagues. So uh, let's begin. We'll dive right in. So my name is Ayanna Siati, and if you know me, uh, you know that I'm very passionate about supporting our clients during this transformation. For the last 10 years, I've been specializing in exactly this with many federal governments and provincial public sector clients. So helping them to deploy and use technology. Um, and I've also been witnessing firsthand the unprecedented acceleration of needs and expectations. And luckily, a growing willingness from above to help address them and also to support you. So I'm a program manager here at Horizon. And um, I've heard this statement during the pandemic and it's something that's really stuck with me. And I think it applies to what's going on right now that we may all be in the same storm but not necessarily the same boat. In other words, some folks have more efficient vessels or navigational equipment that will allow them to weather this storm of change as we move from traditional real property management to really what's next. Um, the new challenges run very deep from how employees work, where they're, you know, what they expect of their workplaces today, and how you are expected to manage it all. Even your roles within the departments are rapidly changing. So I realize there's a bit of stress, certainly greater demands, but also a lot more opportunities as well. We have been answering the SOS call over the last 18 months, and we've helped dozens of departments either either set up new or expand their current systems to help them chart their course towards optimization. If you take anything away from today, I really hope it's this, that it is the strategic use of data to navigate and a spirit of collaboration that will ensure smooth sailing ahead. 
On screen and looking globally, you can see these are the objectives um, are very similar across the board. It's a global corporate priority survey chart, and it identifies the top five objectives for the next three years. Uh, it was published in September, so it is current, and these results come from an extremely detailed and independent research activity with input by over 350 public and private organizations. It's really the dark blue on screen that are the highest priorities and what I'm focusing on. You can see that reducing real estate costs um, real estate and costs for 37%, a decarbonization of 49%, improving the health and well-being of building occupants concerns 25% as top, top concerns. These together with the other two also showing in the chart, so talent retention and building resiliency, really distill down to two main care areas of improvement. I believe it's optimization of portfolios and the workplace experience improvement. And this focus, as you can see, is clearly evident in the current mandates and departmental goals in the Government of Canada. On screen, you'll see some areas where we're seeing the real property management practice grow. So workplace enablement and modernization. This means the need to mix on-site and remote work, um, and it means new accommodation types, equipment, policies, and systems. In a word, hybrid. The hybrid by design approach that was announced a few weeks ago by TBS that caused such a stir in the community and in unions, I might add, um, definitely is a part of that. It suggested two to three days a week, but whatever the department decides, fortunately, many of you are prepared and are preparing to support hybrid work. And hopefully, it'll let the employee decide when it makes sense to come into the office to collaborate when necessary and to do the types of work they need. PSPC says that our workplaces to entice people back need to be far more collaborative, flexible, healthy, efficient, inclusive, digital, and green. The minister's office and your leaders are also prioritizing an optimization of the portfolio itself. So after a good hard look at the current state of things, the, the three-year fixed asset review really reveals some pretty uncomfortable truths about aging buildings, deferred maintenance, and the risks associated to them, creating an urgent top-down call, and this is a quote, to a more sustainable, modernized way to do business and to ensure that our buildings and processes are supporting efficient service delivery. It's the actioning of the 12 recommendations that will put you and your work in the spotlight this year. Greening government is another key mandate that we should all care about. Our commitment on emission reductions and net zero by 2050 or earlier to, to mitigate the threat against the climate crisis is top of mind for many. I think the most logical greenest path forward is a right-sized and efficiently run facilities, both in footprint, in sharing resources and in systems that are, which are also supported by reduction strategies, offsets, and life cycle asset management that takes things from procurement right through to disposal. There's a couple other directive goals that I should also mention that affect your work for the future, and that is the one government, or you may have heard it called the business of government, which is more an elevated practice with collaborative, shared, de-siloed, and a best practices approach. Cloud first is another area with data security and privacy protections and protocols uh, for business continuity and resiliency uh, with some uh, approved cloud options on Azure and Amazon. It's these bubbles on screen where your teams and your departments are going to be measured in the coming months. And you're probably preparing already for the journey and what's needed and, and maybe where to start. So certainly a rising tide lifts all ships. Knowledge is key. It's the skills and the tools that will help. I know there's real property training coming down from the top levels of the executive at TBS. There's RPIC training. I believe there's a brand new um, hub that's just been announced that you can access, an online hub, training hub. There's uh, vendors like us who are on the ground and working with you uh, in the trenches, honestly have a lot of information that we can share and we're happy to connect the dots and connect you folks. You can follow our LinkedIn, Ian will like this, or our industry blogs, um, and uh, because we share a lot of really val val valuable and relevant information. 
Depart colla department collaboration is key. So you want to connect with those who are maybe further along and ask or see for their eternal evaluation or security documents, or just chat about what hurdles they have overcome and how they can really be lighthouses to help you guide and support. Just know that there's some strong communities established like the GC Collab that Michelle Asboth created from Justice and others. So look for those or contact us and let us. Internal collaboration is also important. So building bridges and connecting HR, IT, procurement and finance colleagues. So you start to build a crew and begin to build bridges to map internal who owns the data and what their key responsibilities and concerns are. This helps you identify and understand what's going to help or hinder you um, and also share how what you're doing can support them. And you want to start. Resist the feeling of being overwhelmed. I definitely think that seeing opportunities within this uncomfortable transition and face them with the um, understanding that it's becoming a better way to serve and support and, and not with fear. Leveraging what's been chosen and done can kind of help you be a change champion with confidence. And finally, I think it's also really important to learn the language and priorities of your directors and ADMs, to review departmental goals, which are public and, and published, or the management framework. So that when you get the chance, or more importantly, make the chance, you can position the value that you bring to the table and will continue to bring, and how your demand for resources, the share of the budget, can actually help them achieve their goals. So speaking of enablement, um, we definitely are the premier Canadian partner and an end-to-end -end consulting firm specializing in what's called the globally recognized Archibus solution by Optura. Our experts of business analysts, project managers, tech folks, and, um, and our process is really the special something that has helped to us to quicken the time to value for our Canadian clients with real world solutions that work. And I might add that our solution also supports millions and millions and millions across the globe and whose stability because of that and the ability to support you is assured with commitment, backing and investment partners like Autodesk and, um, and those are the folks that own AutoCAD and Revit. Horizon since 2000 has always been supporting this strategic blend of information technology and real property data. So we really know what's top of mind for you folks. Our mission, values and vision are all focused on people our talented team and their expertise and also our clients and that we serve and support. And the partnering approach really works and it's why we're proudly working with over 35 government departments today, both in the traditional space of uh, traditional space and operations and also in the transformational areas like to support the hybrid work. And this list is really growing quickly. We support both large and small departments that and, this, and the software can scale. We do it direct and we also do it through Pathfinder, through PSPC Pathfinder. And, and the range is from a few hundred employees and a few floors to over 40,000 employees and a few hundred sites, from pilots to um, regional rollouts. Certainly I won't name any of the ones on screen or too many of them, but you can see some heavy hitters like the ESDCs, the shared services, CBSA, DFO, CSC, House of Commons, D&D, &D, and a lot more, including Katza, who you're going to hear from in a few minutes. I've also starred the folks with the RTO packages, so you can see your department there, possibly. And if not, certainly maybe one day soon, because I know there's a lot of work and activity and things that are happening. No matter where your department is on the maturity path, I'm betting the goals of you and your directors and ADMs match those of your colleagues from across Canada. So our most successful clients have what's needed, the forward vision, a willingness to innovate, and the support of leadership, and of course, folks who are change champions. Take PSPC, for example. At what began as an early adopter type of nice-to-have co-working initiative with the creation of special places across Canada that any government employee could easily book, find, work, and collaborate, a shared space, if you will. The initiative really evolved into so much more with COVID. Further vetting a three system pilot um, with the choice of uh, Archibus for their needs with integration options enabled. This co-working was also wrapped with GC recommendations and um, support now called Pathfinder. 
to date, I know that there's at least eight new departments that have signed up and we've also helped another dozen or so directly levering this, leveraging this package. Now, initially we saw the focus on the types of things that was driven from the public health and pandemic itself. So tactical ways to control access, um, restrict capacity or enforce social, social distancing just to, uh, to ensure compliance with the changing policies. But then the conversation has moved more to opportunities to support and a better sharing of resources and of space and hybrid work support, giving employees the power to make choices and to adapt. And now all eyes are on the resulting data that can be harvested for insight and planning. And the fleet continues to grow, which you can join and make choices that you're confident in. Much of the work has been done, vetted, approved by TBS, uh, by PSPC, by Shared Services, and by ESDC, creating a much more common and supported path forward. It is a strong undercurrent of collaboration that's happening right now amongst your colleagues that has had us come so far so fast and means that your journey will be that much easier. You're welcome to contact us uh, here at Horizon or myself. You can chat or connect with others. If you use the back channels, um, just you can learn how they addressed their concerns or made decisions or how they brought stakeholder groups together to launch and succeed. Some of the things that you can actually ask for is the Enterprise Architectural Review Board approvals by TBS or decision records and findings by um, or the PSPC solution pilot options and analysis um, for their other government department strategies. There's also um, a security authorization to operate or an ATO that is for, for IoT sensors that Justice has done. You're going to hear about the SSO or single sign-on and active directory integration that got approved at CATSA. There's accessibility, accessibility compliance audits um, and collaboration at ESDC and shared services that has been done and is still going. There's procurement vehicles like the CELSA, which is a supply software supply licensing, or the task base, which is more on uh, services, or the sole source justifications. There's business cases, value plans by Global Affairs, and many others that have, have kind of forged the path to help your journey easier. Essentially, together with the right equipment and all sailing in the right direction, this new way to think about your data and yourself in the organization will help you to successfully navigate the many priorities and mandates that are on the horizon, not just in the next three months or six months, but longer, like energy management, environmental health and safety, life cycle asset management, risk and environmental preparedness, all creating much greater resiliency and enablement and help you with the decisions for portfolio optimization. These are all areas that Archibus traditionally and, and routinely operate and support our clients in. But today what we're looking at is the workplace portal. It should really be easy. And on the surface, you're starting with a friendly reservations portal for your employees to access resources as needed to do their work in and out of the office. It's tied directly to your current status and floor plans and your employee categories. Then deeper, the admin and the manager side, you can mine the important information to provide choices for them and to justify them. So controls to guide and protect, as well as combined historical and forecasting metrics so that you can move from traditional to transformative workplaces that are responsive and, um, and dynamic. So let's take a look. Your tour guide is going to be Nick Lico, who's a technical sales engineer here at Horizon. He operates out of the, um, the Ottawa office, and he's prepared a 15-minute um, session that's got some key reports for you, the user experience, and how that data can be used to support many purposes, or in our case, what we're talking about today, many mandates. So we're going to take a look at Archibus and how it can help you focus on your key decision points as well as usability uh, and give you a low barrier digitization for your hybrid workplace with a great return on your investment and scalability. The ease of use means that you're going to spend less time getting to your decisions and also less time 
giving instructions to to your users. So the first place we're going to start is that decision point. Uh, we're going to look at the decisions you'll make in the near and midterm. Things like how can I improve attendance, the efficiency of the space, how can I support my mandates that I'm getting, and understand the preferences of the, the users and adapt to suit the accommodation needs that you have. And as we'll see later on, this is going to tie into other services you might offer or want to track the conditions of your space, your equipment, the costs, uh, lots of different places where we can leverage this. So the first thing we're going to look at is how are my buildings being used? So I'm going to take a look at a report by building here. And we'll just take a look at a few of our buildings for 2020 as a sample. So we can see here the trend over time of how these buildings were being utilized, uh, the, the rate of utilization. Um, so this helps us decide on where to ask questions, what's under and over utilized. Uh, there are equivalent reports that we'll see from a departmental perspective, how are different groups using the space, but this allows us to decide where to pursue improvements for our offering. Where are we seeing more usage coming in? Which buildings, which types of rooms? These are the kind of decisions that we can get to from this kind of report. So similarly, We can take a look at a departmental view. So depending on how you're uh, you're assigning your space to your groups, we can take a look at how they're making use of the space they're given. And this works really well in a hybrid situation because it's keeping track of both fixed and bookable spaces, uh, including things like neighborhood options and a variety of other things that, that we can track. Uh, so who's not making the most of the space that we're offering to them? We can see here we have a few departments that are 80 plus 85 percent utilized and then we have a few that are down at 50 percent or below. So why is that? Do they have specific needs that we're not meeting? Is there just poor adoption in that group? Is the location, the space um, the issue? So that's helping us drive to improving the offering that we have. Now looking at the other side, um, looking at the, the space itself. We're going to take a look at the daily usage of our resources. And again, an equivalent view for the space. Uh, right now we're, we're looking at resources here. But this allows us to easily compare to see if our space is being used. So for things that are underutilized, we may want to consider divesting or reallocating and for things that are over overutilized, we may want to consider adding space or reconfiguring an existing space to, to, to meet what we have. So we can see here we have a list of uh, how things are being used each day and we can see that some of them have a fair bit of usage, some of them don't have very much. So that's helping us drive to the decision of what we're offering. Getting even more specific from there, we can take a look at spaces that haven't been booked in a given date range. And this allows us to see, look for problems effectively and find spaces that aren't being used either because they're not configured properly, they're, they're not useful for our users, or maybe there's a problem. For example, I can see here, I have a list where a bunch of spaces on one floor are not being used and that could be because there's a problem with that floor. Maybe the lighting isn't great. Maybe there is a maintenance issue that, that I want to look into. So that's the, the kind of decision that we're driving at here. Getting a little bit more forward thinking, we do have the option to build out with sensors. 
uh, to show the intended use compared with the actual use and understand the behavior of, of our users. So this helps us improve the data accuracy because we're not relying on users to tell us what space they're using. And it also simplifies things for the users. It's one less step for them to, uh, to tell us that. So it's just an option that uh, as, as you move forward, as you expand, uh, you, can, you can go that way. In the vein of keeping things easy for your users, I'd like to show you the simple, accessible, bilingual, and user-friendly interface that, that the users will use to make their bookings. Uh, and it does match on the desktop, on a mobile device, and if you use kiosks or screens at your rooms, it'll also match on there. So your users are only learning one interface. Uh, it is configurable and can include other services. As you can see here, I have a, a service desk card that uh, that I can add to, but it's as, as simple as you need it to be to make sure that you're not spending a ton of time helping your users work with it. So I'm gonna take a use case of a user who wants to meet with somebody else uh, who is in a hybrid working situation. So I need to track down where that person is working and when. I need to book a space for myself in that same location and then book a meeting with that individual. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is track down that user. And I'm going to use my team calendar to track them down because I'm on the same team as them. Uh, so I can see that AJ Miller, the person that I'm trying to meet with, has booked a desk for Friday. I'll just click there and I can locate that desk. I see it highlighted in the TGV Technology Center on the second floor. So I know that that's where I want to go to meet with AJ. I can also do a search by name if uh, the user's not on my team or I don't want to use that calendar view. So I'm going to go ahead and book a space. Luckily for me, I also am assigned uh, as a hybrid worker on in that TGD Technology Center, so I can see that that's my default that pops up. I am provided with some filtering options, so of course I want to move to Friday. I'm going to go with booking a full day. I'm driving in anyways, might as well spend the day working there. And if there are any amenities uh, or services that I want to have, uh, I can make sure that the space that I'm looking at has that. So for example, I don't like carrying around all my cords, so let's see if there's a space with a docking station here. Great floor plan interface, very easy to use, and also very easy to implement um, based on CAD drawings that, uh, that you likely already have. So I'm going to choose one of these spaces that has a docking station. I'll hit book, book for myself in this case, and confirm the booking. In the background, I'm getting a notification behind the scenes. Um, if there are workflow steps that a manager needs to approve, uh, in some cases, that is also happening behind the scenes. Uh, but very simple for a user. I now have a desk booked. Now I need to book my meeting. And again, very familiar interface for the user, so they're not relearning. Uh, I can see the same sort of filtering over here. I'm going to choose my date. Uh, I'd like to meet in, let's say, first thing in the morning. Let's go with 9 o'clock with AJ. And I don't need anything special for this room other than two seats. Um, I, and I can see immediately on the floor plan which rooms have two seats. So let's book a smaller room. No need to take up a larger room for a two-person meeting. And I'm prompted to confirm my time if I'm making a recurring meeting. This is just a one-time meeting. And let's invite AJ so they know I'm meeting with them. I can choose to keep the meeting details private. In this case, I don't mind. And just like that, I confirm the meeting. Again, notifications in the background. AJ will get a meeting invite in their email. This can be tied back to your Outlook, your Exchange, or Office 365 to keep things in sync if you choose to. Uh, so that's an optional piece. But again, very easy, straightforward for the users, and very quick. I did a lot of talking, and that took me probably less than five minutes to, to go through my whole setup process. So that's great 
utility for the users, but also great information for you, right? That feeds that those reports that we saw. And it also feeds some higher level reports that are going to help make kind of the bigger picture decision. So you can leverage the foundation you have built here to grow your decision making capabilities, guide you towards your mandates, your key decisions. The data you build with the, the hybrid solution is reusable for many purposes, many areas. As you augment it, it becomes more than the sum of its parts. And we'll see some, some ways that we can take advantage of that, uh, allowing you to make quick decisions with the option to drill down to specific data. All out of the box, what we've seen so far, and all extensible. So what you're seeing right now is a decision-making dashboard based on that hybrid working situation. We can see this is a great landing page for your day to day. You're managing by exception. You only need to pay attention to the things that actually require your attention. You don't have to go and find the information. It's coming to you. Um, we can see, for example, I have a list of uh, recent health and safety incidents, quite a high number there, so I can quickly access the associated information from there. Similar perspective, we can take a look at managing our assets, our space, our equipment what you have, where it is, how it's doing. So things like the condition, the FCI or DFRP style, uh, making your reporting easier for those, those areas of responsibility. And it's gonna combine with that workplace information that how it's being used to know where to spend your money. Um, you can take you know these portfolio perspectives and um, and drill down to a specific location to get information that you need. Related to your assets is their environmental impact. So here we're talking about things like your sustainability initiatives. Um, what's your worst performer from a carbon footprint perspective? Is it better to divest, improve, and where will you get the most improvement? A lot of power here. Circling back to the employee experience, we can talk about things like safety, right? We, we, we're tracking all the space already. Um, we can track incidents, remediation, training to understand our, our compliance status. We can also know who is where, where we can send them in the event of an emergency. Uh, we know where to communicate with them. We can leverage the floor plans that we already have to track hazard locations, egress routes, and assign safety officers who will oversee a given space uh, and be that kind of liaison with first responders or for compliance purposes. So a lot of value there. Finally, stepping back to the very high level portfolio level decision making, all of this information that's available in the system can be rolled up to these very big picture decisions, building level decisions, portfolio level decisions based on that usage, the condition, the performance, the cost, the environmental impact, all of those factors that, that you want to track at a granular level can be rolled up to these big picture decisions, whether you're going to invest, divest, or adjust, where you're going to, to see the most optimization. So in closing, what we're doing with our hybrid solution here is allowing you to focus on what's necessary today, a safe, controlled, hybrid work environment that enables your employees and gives you the information to report <laughs> and justify your decisions in the dynamic reality we find ourselves in, all without compromising the future, in fact, helping put you in a better position for the future. So we're going to help your groups thrive in the workplace and give you the tools you need to support them. So the ultimate goal really is to help you move from reactive and to proactive, sort of charting your course uh, with your internal data and the results that you're going to be asked for. As you saw in Nick's tour, 
um, the information entered in one place can be shared and leveraged with permissions to other roles or purposes, the health and safety, the asset managers or the energy managers, etc. But it also can share information with other source systems, so you're not recreating it. Um, so you pull in information from your Active Directory or you um, inform from SAP. These are kind of pathways that have already been established and can help uh, support the bigger picture that uh, um, that Nick was showing us. The um, the push and pull of information, we think of Archibus as a bit of an engine either in front of or behind the, uh, the data that you're using. And being able to harvest the information that you're getting from your booking system will give you great utilization data um, to, to, to make some, some kind of tough quest decisions going forward. And transformation should really free up your time to focus on the strategic parts of your work, not the mundane or repetitive. repetitive. To share trusted data ends up being a lot less work, um, not more, and certainly will enable every level of use. So on that note, I'm going to turn things over to my colleague and your colleague, Paul Trudeau from CATSA, who's graciously offered to talk to you today and share some of his observations and recent experience, um, and also how they're, you know, what they're using to support uh, their employees with hybrid. Thanks, Diana. I uh, appreciate your time and uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, thank you all for uh, also attending and, and listening to my monotonous uh, voice. So I, I'm not no normally doing this, so I apologize if it doesn't seem as professional as Iana. Um, my name is Paul Trudeau. I work with uh, CATSA. We are the uh, Canadian Air Transport Security Authority. And um, my team of two individuals uh, are responsible for roughly uh, 90,000 square feet of uh, space across Canada. Uh, it's a small footprint compared to some, uh, but it just goes to show that uh, Archibus is uh, uh, functional just with any size team. Uh, I started uh, at CATSA since uh, 2006, uh, 2006. I've been working here for 15 years, and since that time, I've been working with Archibus. And uh, we focus heavily on the space and uh, uh, occupancy modules that they have, along with the uh, specific integration with AutoCAD. Uh, we felt that the importance of those two pieces of uh, software working together were critical uh, for time-saving initiatives and efficiencies. Uh, usually when I talk about Archibus, I talk about uh, tr making some things into buttons. I don't uh, exactly tell my boss about that, but uh, it really does make my life a lot simpler. And when we heard about the return to work, uh, and the hoteling software uh, and features that uh, Archibus has, uh, we definitely gave Horizon a quick call and asked for some demos. And I must say that the demos, uh, just like Nick's, uh, are exactly ad as advertised. They are, it's a simple procedure and the reporting is uh, quite uh, wonderful. And the simplicity is what we were looking for uh, for our user ends. So I'll just get into uh, what we were looking for uh, for Archibus and some of the key decisions that we made uh, from Archibus to keep active. Um, one of the uh, uh, situations that we wanted to keep relatively simple was the user experience. As Nick had mentioned and uh, Iana as well, uh, simplicity is key. And originally I was not gonna be going with a single sign-on process. I didn't think it was uh, that uh, uh, ne necessary. However, uh, Horizon and my IT team let me know that uh, a single sign-in process was the best and fastest way to go. And boy, was that the best decision that I didn't make. Uh, <laughs> we uh, have made the sign-in process into a couple of clicks, and uh, that is the best user experience uh, that my team has been expressing to me. The process uh, from uh, getting that involved uh, was quite straightforward. The Horizon team was easily uh, worked with my IT team to connect our Active Directory, which already feeds the GEDS information, uh, and use the appropriate fields that are there uh, 
uh, to link to Archibus and make any user seamlessly active. As you can see on this screen here on the top left, uh, that's our splash page uh, that uh, Nick was referring to. It's not, uh, it's very simple and uh, very user friendly as he indicated. And two of the main features that we kept activated uh, were the amenities portion um, and the room types along with the find an employee. As Nick demonstrated, it is that simple. And some users have decided to create their own captains uh, to, um, make reservations ahead of their teams so that people can then book around them just like Nick uh, showed. It's uh, quite a fun uh, uh, fact that we that uh, the our, our employees have gone that route as we didn't initially activate neighborhoods which is a, um, uh, a prescriptive way of doing hoteling and uh, it seems to be working for our team. Um, at this time, as you can see on the far right-hand side, uh, the features and uh, the filter selections can be as detailed as you want, as Nick showed, or as high-level uh, 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 and simple as required. And as you can see, it's very straightforward. Uh, another feature that we uh, kept activated uh, were um, just the general reporting um, because as Nick showed, it's quite important to make sure that your data uh, can match uh, the user experience and be prepared to report on why uh, things need to change in the office as more people either show up to the office or aren't showing up, and that could be an issue too. Um, as you can see, that little, the quick little bar table clearly indicates that our high-level uh, uh, attendance uh, on our floors is solely on uh, when Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays uh, midweek. You could always hear that that's when people are coming in, but this data supports that. And when people say that there aren't uh, enough offices or uh, features available on certain days, you have the data uh, that Archibus can uh, uh, provide you to make those decisions. And that's what leads us to uh, some of our like lessons learned and next steps is that uh, right now we may actually have to activate the neighborhoods as more people are coming into the office uh, and some of the um, amenities may need to be uh, either duplicated or increased uh, to accommodate those changes. And that's what's important is that um, the world is pretty dynamic and Archibus allows us to be uh, 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 dynamic and respond to those changes. Um, and that's uh, 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 another item that we were looking for is the check-in feature and possibly the, uh, the sensor uh, um, uh, features that Nick was alluding to, just to, again, make sure that our data and the use of our space is accounted for and so that things are not left uh, in a desert, if you will. Um, the software is very capable at tracking the data, uh, which we use uh, to support uh, the dynamic changes from day to day, uh, week to week, and shortly, month to month. So um, we look at uh, possibly reaching out back out to Horizon uh, for more reporting uh, 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 aspects and to help us uh, with that. So uh, overall, our experience with Archibus and Horizon has been uh, quite flawless for software uh, upgrades, to be honest with you. Every, uh, every software launch always has hiccups and um, it's been pretty minute. So uh, Ayana and your team, thank you very much. And I'll hand it back to you. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you very much. Paul, I know you've been fairly successful with uh, what we're showing today. Um, certainly, I think activating the single sign-on in the Active Directory is a nice key uh, step and certainly what we recommend. Um, but we definitely have sort of a, um, the pillars of successful technology roadmap um, there's, there's equally important parts to it. And part of your team is you do have a core competency center and you have thought um, 
about the tools and processes for the uh, best practices. As, you know, we're, I'm partial and you're probably partial to Archibus, but the tool that is chosen has to be easy. It should not be um, just built inside an isolated data kind of um, silo. Um, and it should not, it, it might, standalone systems or pre or, or homegrown things might seem cheaper initially, but you lose a lot of the uh, dynamic industry um, development that's happened. The strong internal knowledge center, you know, that's part of the reason why you're successful. Um, and I'm certainly glad to hear that you're continuing to enhance things further. And we definitely appreciate your uh, your time today to uh, to share with uh, folks. Um, the transformation is a destination and a journey. So the very last little circle there talks about the continuous process of improvement. It's kind of a culture. Um, to be able to mitigate risk, you need a, your choice needs to be intuitive and easy, uh, supported and stable, but you also need the commitment by uh, those internally to, um, to, uh, to take this journey. And um, it doesn't have to be hard. The return to office package is about the portal that you saw, um, its access and enablement. Um, and we often will turn things off in the system initially until the data, until people start to track the data that's possible in the system. So it does, it can be nice and clean and streamlined like Paul was talking about. Um, but definitely successful folks are not waiting or hoping the storm will pass because it really won't. Um, the turbulencies that we're, we're facing, um, the properly managed data will be able to guide you in the right direction and also be able to make course corrections along the way. And it provides a much more dynamic, richer experience for everyone. With the underlying business intelligence or BI to help you visualize control, um, and the to enforce transparency, demonstrating compliance and um, standardization gives you uh, really sound data to make the tough calls with confidence. So on screen are just some of the flexible reporting possible. There's some out of the box reporting on the right and a custom view of uh, PSPC that I was uh, would have permission to share. Um, basically, Archibus can talk to push and pull information, like I said before, and um, the metrics are just a few of the out-of-the-box views um, and that tweak dashboard to show you uh, what kinds of results you can get. So you can understand what buildings are used the most, so 60% here over two key buildings in the National Capital Region. You can see what are the most popular days, echoing what Paul said, so midweek where you see 77% percent of um, the um, activity on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. What percentage of employees have used the on-site booking tool is an interesting question too. The answer here was 40, sorry, 14 percent for a certain time period but 42 percent overall. Hourly reports on boardroom bookings and the size etc. And what was the effect of adding neighborhoods which was increased by 28 percent in this case plus a whole lot more. So you can either share with direct access to the home pages or the dashboard views that you saw earlier with your leaders or your specific managers with areas of interest, or you can export to um, PowerPoint, to PDF, or to Excel, or you can also feed things like Power BI or Crystal Reports. I mean, there's a lot to be able to harvest the data already with out of the box, um, completely out of the box uh, uh, reports, but it is also completely configurable, filterable, and you can do your ad hoc reporting as needed. So really it's the right data at the right time um, for the right need and for the right focus. And you can see sort of a few enablement views on screen to show you kind of the simplicity of your use and user use to the more complex role and three dimensional or two and three dimensional uh, views into, um, into your, your buildings. It's mobile friendly, uh, accessible and um, promotes the tracking, measuring and ultimately the modernization of the way we work. So it's a, it's a pretty cool tool. And again, these kinds of dashboards can let you um, really see what you need to focus on. Um, it'll show you trends, but 
even more importantly, you can click on anything in those dashboard views and get to the data and work with it the way you need to. So this is a skill that will really help you and probably one of the most important things uh, going forward is understanding what, what can help you uh, in this journey. On screen are the six kind of um, relevant tactical benefits that one of our clients shared with us. Um, we, we do a technology road mapping exercise with clients and one of my roles here at Horizon is to help planning um, a three to five year kind of technology roadmap in order to help keep track of what things they might be interested in onboarding and also um, manage budget um, and, and where they want to go. So um, they, these are tactical benefits that they use to be able to sell the idea of IWMS up the stream. And um, I would like to, you know, just reiterate that the system is bilingual. It's trusted, proven, has an, it's an enabled um, workplace package uh, returned to the office to support the um, government goals you know, today and tomorrow and, and certainly for the for the future. This client actually, when they uh, deployed, won internal service awards supporting their employees and the department goals. So um, I'm gonna wrap up with one final thought before we get to uh, questions that um, in these turbulent times, if you let it, the way to think about your data and to position your value is the life raft a real way to help improve service delivery for yourself, for your employees, for your leaders, and um, of course, for the Canadian people that you all serve. So we'll turn things over now to, we have exactly 10 minutes left, so we can um, maybe field some questions from the chat. I will turn off my screen sharing and we can turn on my video and we'll go from there. We're actually just going to launch the poll that we have first before we kick to kind of kick things off just to see where everybody in attendance is sitting at sitting at right now. So sure. launch poll. There you go. So you guys can see it should be up on your screen now. What do you see as the main challenges to workplace change for you? So lack of direction or training, resources, support from leadership, data availability or uncertainty. We kind of narrowed, narrowed it down to these five core areas that we're seeing that I and our team seeing a lot of so if you can if you want to go ahead and answer and kind of we can start discussing and see where everybody else lies I'm not seeing it is everyone seeing it sorry oh yeah we got one I see it's open and attendees only you can't answer it oh okay <laughs> <laughs> sorry Anna okay darn it <laughs> Let's leave it up for a few more seconds. Oh, we're actually still getting answers. Seven, forty-five. Just gonna give you a couple more seconds. Collect some last minute answers. And sixty, sixty-five, seventy. I'm seeing it'll go up a lot faster now. Share results. Okay. Lack of directions, resources. Okay, so Anna, you should be able to see the results now up on the screen. Uh, oh, here we go. How come yeah. it keeps disappearing on me? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so certainly it looks like uh, the audience. Uh, Nope, maybe you can read to me what the most, what oh, the okay, top. Sorry. So poll results, lack of direction and training is 20%. Resources are actually in the lowest uh, result with 7%. Support from leadership at 21 and uncertainty with 36. So lack of direction and training, leadership support and uncertainty are the three, the three highest uh, er, uh, areas that we're seeing challenge in right now. Okay, well that that makes sense. I mean, you guys are not in, in um, 
in your own boat. There's a, a lot of people that are dealing with some of the same challenges. And uh, as I said, you know, work the back channels, contact us. We can put you in touch with people that have done it. Um, I think definitely it's it's a it's a tool that um, has already you know been vetted and 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 has support across the government. Um, and we can show you how whether it's through Pathfinder and PCS PSPC or or direct. So how about those questions? Uh, Ian, did you want to uh, let me know if anything has come through? Yep, just one sec, there we go. Okay, so yeah, we have three actually in the chat right now. One of the first one is, we have on-premise Archibus right now. Is there a good reason to switch to cloud slash or SaaS Archibus? Uh, okay, well, definitely that's something that um, a lot of organizations are deciding. And, and there's no easy answer to it because um, certainly the functionality and the software is pretty much the same, whether you go on-premise or your own cloud. Um, but there's advantages to each kind of um, platform deployment. Um, obviously with SaaS and with any cloud, uh, the SaaS or private, um, you're looking at some additional costs terms of inf infrastructure and um, and possibly managed services, depending on how you set it up. Um, On-premise is, you know, you have a little bit more autonomy. You get to decide what it looks, what the look and feel is and, and when you want to upgrade. And um, the costs are lower over a certain amount of time um, if you've uh, it sort of invested in the term software and 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 are just managing it so you don't have those infrastructure costs on the other hand if you've got a small team and the cloud or the PSPC option might be a good route for you to consider or contemplate um, still giving you kind of uh, the RTO package with um, with maybe a little bit more cost but also um, a little less lean on your IT folks um, but the you know it really is a it's something where the the whole industry is moving towards cloud and services that um, whether it's AWS like the Amazon or um, Microsoft Azure which are both approved for the government um, and with your own protections in place um, certainly we have we have folks on all three. So, um, so the advantages again, just reach out to me, and we can talk like specifics of what you have and and what the total cost of ownership is over a three to five per year period, and that's what tells you whether you want to go that route or or next. And uh, just keep in mind that the 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 cloud is is one of the directives and and definitely um, a strategy to and for for lots of good reasons you get backups and and. Um, and state-of-the-art servers and and you know a lot of people like that yeah okay so we got two more now i know we're kind of, we're kind of getting the end here so we'll get through these the second one what is pathfinder again versus the direct option and what are the pros versus cons okay well pathfinder and uh direct is archibus uh as, at the base um the foundational um ability to do the return to the office is the same whichever you choose um PSPC is kind of moving towards that one government uh direction where there's standardization um and uh enforcing it's kind of archibus is almost a de facto standard uh, across the government now um and so they're just taking it that extra step further to be able to offer their services to uh, smaller departments that are onboarding. On the other hand, there's a lot of people that um, already have Archibus, have their drawings in the system and, and have it set up in a special way with their protections or their security or, you know, it, behind their firewalls. And um, some folks prefer to do the, um, oh, and they may also want to activate some things that are not quite in the areas, um, like some folks, that I am working with have activated the asset management and the environmental health and safety and prefer to have that check-in, check-out features activated. So there's a couple of good tactical reasons for uh, direct, but also the people at PSPC are doing an awesome job. And, and for folks that just want to do the return to the office and you know, that's, the, that's what they need, it's a great option. Yep. Okay, so thank you for that. And then the third one, what documentation is available to gain? You said that could be shared. All right. Okay, well, that's where I want you to either reach out to us and we can give you the list. 
of things that others have used. Um, if you are sitting there as a net new person um, and didn't see your name on the list of uh, government departments that we're working with, um, reach out to us and we can definitely um, let you know, uh, we can provide you sort of, um, you know, PowerPoints and bulletins and software information that, that can help. We can do tours, um, we can do, provide all of that kind of sort of support information as well as, um, but internally along the government, there's been uh, security audits, there's an authorization to op operate with the sensors that have been done. Uh, there's the accessibility stuff work that uh, shared services and, and ESDC um, spent a good long time with us in ArcBus to make that portal um, accessible to the WCAG compliance. I think we're really close um, and there's a commitment to continue that development. So um, there's those things. There's um, business cases. There's um, there's uh, some really awesome things that are available to you guys. Um, there's the um, the procurement vehicles, the Salsa and TBIPs that I mentioned. There's also sole source folks. Some folks have gone that route and uh, been successful. So we have those kind of internal red tape things that we can we can help to um, just just if there's ever a time for us all to kind of get on the same boat um, and sail in the right direction, I think it's now. And um, so you know we have approval to share certain things um, and. I also know there's that GC collab uh, space um, and there's a lot of conversations and a lot of activity that's happening. So this is, and also thank you for, um, you know, joining us today because I think that uh, this shows um, not only your interest in, in learning and, and addressing the, the things that are on the horizon, but also we'll start to build the, um, the, the crew that'll help you get there. So thanks so much. Um, we're wrapping it up right on time so you can get back to your busy days. Um, sure. Thank you, Paul, for, for coming. I think nothing says uh, value better than the people that are actually doing it. So I really appreciate your time um, and your expertise. And thanks. Uh, Ian, thank you. Thank you for doing this. I know we'll be sending everybody a copy of the recording as well. And I know that we have another webinar planned for next month as well, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, that one will be focusing around the return to office and getting everything smoothly. I know that's a lot on, on everybody's minds right now, so we're trying to kind of hit all the hit all the right notes right now. Get everybody get everybody the right information on the right technology and how we how we can help. So, yeah, thank you everybody, and have a good rest of your day. Bye, guys.